Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Nutritional Revolution podcast. We have Amanda Brooks for you guys. If you are not familiar, she's a certified run coach, personal trainer, and she's helped thousands of runners through her one-on-one coaching as well as a virtual run club, which we can dive into all that today. She has an amazing blog and YouTube. I highly suggest you guys check that out. Um, Her Instagram, Run to the Finish. She's published over 2,000 articles and her own book, also called Run to the Finish, with the goal of helping others fall in love with running and avoid injuries. So thank you so much, Amanda, for joining us. Absolutely. Excited to be here. Yes. We will dive into all things nutrition, running tips, coaching, all the fun things. But before we do and learn too much about you, we're going to start with our two truths and a lie. So go ahead and let us know what you got. All right. So let's see if you can figure it out. Okay. One, I used to do a lot of theater and I even played Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. Okay. Two, during our honeymoon in Italy, I actually ran a marathon. (laughs) Three, the only ultra I've done was a 50K by myself during COVID lockdown. Mm. (laughs) Interesting. I'm like this. uh, This one's like, I'm actually a little stumped. Um, I feel like it's not. I feel like maybe you did run a marathon when you were on your honeymoon and 50K during lockdown. Was this a 50K race or just like you ran 50K? So since it was during lockdown, not a race. Okay. That's what I was. Okay. Um, That could be a goal someone might set during COVID. It's very realistic. I'm going to go with the theater kid. Maybe you weren't a theater kid. I'm going to go with that. What do you think, Nia? I was also going to say the same thing because I feel like the other two are pretty feasible. So running related. Yeah. Okay. Well, don't tell us the answer. We're going to reveal it for the listeners at the end. We'll find out if you were a theater kid or not, (laughs) or if you did (laughs) run during your honeymoon, do a marathon or 50K during COVID. Um, So let us know how did in some of these lies or truths might be revealed during all of this, of course, as well. But how did you get into running? What brought you into the sport and getting into coaching? Yeah. So I always did a lot of sports. I was, I mean, I guess I would call myself athletic because I did a lot of sports. Yeah. Uh, running was generally something I looked at as punishment. It was when you were late to practice or things like that. So it was kind of a funny thing towards my junior year of college, a group of friends were traveling to do the Nashville rock and roll half marathon and I wanted to go. And that literally was like the start of everything. So that was 2002. Um, so I started running then and I didn't fall in love with racing. I'm still not really in love with racing per se, but I did fall in love with that process of running and the training and, oh my gosh, this is so hard, but I'm doing it. I'm choosing to do it. It was a very weird, like mental thing to sort of realize, like I'm choosing to do something hard. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. I think the challenge of running or, I mean, even just the scheduling and getting it all kind of like ticking those boxes. I think a lot of people like that and appreciate that. I, I call them some of my type A athletes, but like, they like that organization and like the feeling of ticking those boxes kind of thing. It's very satisfying. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. And so with kind of the intro, you, the book you did run to the finish, um, you mentioned kind of avoiding injuries. Is that something you've dealt with in your past? Or your running career? So probably my, the biggest issue I really had was around 2007. I had an IT band issue, which is so common for runners. Um, and at that point, I still feel like even five years in, I felt like such a new runner. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I hadn't gotten coaching certified or learned as much yet. And so that was kind of my first introduction to injuries. And I was still in that mindset of runners push through. And so I went to a marathon, knew I was like having issues. Yep. And by mile 13, I could just barely walk, but I would not let myself stop. And I'm not proud of this. So I finished that race. Some of my miles took over 20 minutes because I was in so much pain. Yeah. Um, And I couldn't run for six months afterwards. And that. Yeah. 
horrible, like, but a major turning point in the way I looked at running and Mm -hmm. really did start to send me down this path of learning so much more about running. Um, And then that has become something I am really passionate about as a coach, because a lot of the injuries can be prevented. Um, I mean, things happen. I had knee surgery in 2017 because I jumped on a trampoline. (laughs) So you can't prevent everything, but a lot of the common things we can do a lot to. Yeah. With the IT band stuff, I dealt with some of that myself back in the day when I also, I just started running outside on the trails because I liked it and I found it fun. And then it I didn't have a program. I didn't, wasn't planning to race. I just liked doing it. And then eventually it just became this thing where it's like every run a little bit earlier into every run, this like pain would pick up on the knee and each run would have to be cut shorter and shorter. And it was something that for a very, like, I would say years, like I could not figure it out at the time. Um, and so I, I'm curious with it band issues. Do you think that is something where I mean, I feel like in my case, like I was not following a program. I was just running when I wanted to, when I felt like it going as far as I felt like it, um, at the time also I was didn't knew nothing about sports nutrition. So I was not fueling, you know, during, but do you think that's something where people are getting these issues? Cause it's an overuse or not resting enough or. There's usually a couple of common issues. So I actually created like an 80 page IT band ebook because I was like, yes, this is the issue I get questions about more than anything else. Um, and one comes down to uh, the lack of strength, honestly, mm-hmm. in our hips and our glutes. Most mm-hmm. of us, when we start running, all we do is run. We yeah. just yeah. want to run. So we skip everything else. Um, and the body eventually tells us that's yeah. problematic. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, And then the second does tend to be um, a little bit of overuse. Mm -hmm. So I know in my case, for sure, I was like, okay, well, that's my new goal time. So I'm just going to run everything at that pace. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, you know, the lack of easy, hard, and even with trails, there's so much more stability happening. And so if that knee or that ankle are falling in constantly, Mm -hmm. they're just pulling that IT band with every step. Um, And we don't always realize that it's happening. So it takes someone looking at you to say, yeah, did you know every time you take a step, your knee falls inward? And if you would just do your hip strength exercises, that will stop happening. So those tend to be the most common. The other one that does happen, um, and this is an issue for me, I'd say every three or four months, I'll go to the chiropractor and get Mm. my hips adjusted. And Um. for whatever reason, as runners with the pounding, we can get a little like one side higher or hips like just rotated a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the more strength training we do often, the less that happens. So I used to have to go more often now Mm -hmm. just kind of notice like, yeah, something seems a little off and yeah, but that happens to a ton of runners. Yeah. That's yeah. That's excellent to kind of hear that with that process, your recovery process, like you're mentioning, you mentioned strengthening stuff, doing strength training. What was your rehab process like? So anytime I've ever had to do any kind of physical therapy, I treat it like a job, man. (laughs) I'm like, if you tell me to do this three times a day, I'm going to do it three times a day. You're the best client. (laughs) Yeah. So I've had to tell that to PTs because they don't always believe that. So they have at times been like, okay, no, no, really then only do these two exercises. <laughs> like if you're actually doing everything because yeah. all of a sudden I've got a 30 minute routine because you keep telling me to add. Right. <laughs> um, I think that was huge. And I will say even then in 2007, when that happened, I didn't like, or maybe it's 2009, I've been running too long. <laughs> mm. Um, I didn't, immediately jump into like full on strength training. I really just started doing all of those PT exercises. So it's a lot of lunges, a lot of mini bands, and all of that is amazing and very preventative. Um, I wish I had known a little more about strength even then. And I would have started to add that. Shoot. Yeah. That I remember with my process seeing physical therapists as well, there was a lot of, you know, clamshell exercises and, um, glute bridges and that kind of stuff, um, to help strengthen the glutes. But 
yeah, it's, I think the IT band stuff is a, is a very common injury with runners. So for our listeners, we will link your IT band book in the show notes so people can check that out and we'll link your website as well. So people can look at all the things you offer. Um, but yeah, I think that's a handy one for people to have with that rehab process too, were you, so you said you didn't run for six months. Is that what you said? It was about six months. So I was doing a lot of walking. Mm -hmm. Um, So once, I mean, I really messed things up. So initially it was too painful to even walk. Um, But once I could do that, I just got out there every day. And it was interesting. That was the first time I listened to something besides music. I started listening to some audio books that were like Louise Hay and like these really like affirmation kind of things. Yeah. Um, And again, I was like, I felt like it shifted my running. I started taking advantage of the time to think just being like way more grateful that I could be out there. Um, And it's unfortunate, but for a lot of us, it takes an injury for you to suddenly be grateful that you can run. Um, And that really, I have held on to literally since that injury. That's great. Yeah. You found your why, right? And getting out there. I think that's important. So with kind of the journey and and your running progression and getting maybe more into racing, getting a little bit more serious with it. Um, what was your nutrition either in and around during training? What, what it, what was that like and how has that progressed over the years? Oh my gosh, it was such a mess. Um, (laughs) I mean, So very first marathon was 2007. So yeah, IT band must've been 2009. So I think during that first marathon, one, I was wearing a cotton t-shirt. If this tells you like the level of tech savvy, (laughs) um, I saw my parents once on the course and I think had them hand me like a couple of those orange fruit slices. Mm -hmm. That is all I took in for the duration of that marathon. Like, wow. I did not know any better. I had never tried a gel in my life. So I had done multiple half marathons prior to that, which means I had never used fueling in any of those either. Wow. Um, Yes. And I look back at that and it fascinates me. And so I know in that first marathon, I had like an emotional breakdown around mile 23, Mm. but then like I rallied and was just I was so happy for that entire race. <laughs> um, so it's very funny to me to look back at that and think, That's oh, great. I wonder how much better it would have been. Mm-hmm. Um, it honestly took multiple more marathons of yeah. horrible fueling for my brain to finally like click in, like you are missing something here. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I love that it is something that is so much more talked about now. It really was just kind of this idea of like, here's some goos, you should use those. And I was like, but they're awful and they make yeah. me feel awful. And I didn't know what else to do. And so then you just do nothing, which I have heard from many of my athletes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think that's very common. So with your nutrition and, and I'm assuming some hydration and take two, hopefully at some points, um, what, what's kind of your go-to that you found works well for you in maybe a harder race pace training session or in something like a marathon distance, what's kind of your go-to that you like that works well with your GI and performance wise? Yeah. So one of the things that I realized for myself is that liquid nutrition is actually super valuable for me. So Mm. if I can make that part of the equation, I'm way ahead of the game. Yeah. Um, So partially, I think, because when I moved to Miami and I was training there, I did start like making myself carry something and I just made it like a, okay, every time your watch buzzes a mile, you're going to take a sip. So that way I was never guzzling. I was never sloshing, but I was constantly drinking. And so then when I moved to adding liquid nutrition, I already kind of had this mental system in place and it made it really easy to start getting in those calories. Um, other things. So during like during training runs, I love using things like cinnamon bears because they're like oh, nice, yeah. Something I would not like just normally let myself chow down on. Um, but in races, <laughs> I find all that chewing is a little bit harder. <laughs> yeah, right. Definitely. Um, so I can do now. Um, oh gosh, now it's called built. 
I believe. Oh, I haven't heard of that. Yeah. And I do like them. It's, I will use it for caffeine. And since Mm -hmm. I don't drink coffee or use caffeine otherwise, it's something where I will use it maybe mid race during a Mm -hmm. longer race or at the beginning of a short race. Um, to kind of get that boost and then try to mix in whether it's some chews. So taking a couple at a time and just Mm -hmm. kind of consistently instead of trying to take all of something at one time. Yeah. So kind of that variety for sure, I think has felt a lot better. That's great. With the built, is that a powder that you put in your water or is that? The built is a gel. Oh, it is. Um, Okay. So that is a gel that um, I kind of found I could use. It has a little bit more fat in it. So definitely Mm. does not work for everyone. My system has no, it's not like a keto kind of thing, but it does have a little fat. Um, That feels good for me for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think there's something to be said for that. Um, I think, you know, with a lot of the research, we're just seeing, I mean, goodness, everybody's guts and sweat rates and sweat sodium concentration is so individual. And so testing, you know, with what works for you and then progressively increasing that over time seems to be the way to go. Um, so yeah, I think, I mean, there's, there's something to be said for that. Absolutely. Um, so with the liquid nutrition, what is that product that you use? That you so like? tailwind and oh, gnarly yeah. are the two I tend okay. to, to lean towards. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. We just, Nia and I just got some samples from gnarly. So we were t- testing out their fuel two O product. Um, do you use that one? Is that what you're talking about? Yep. I've used, so that one I think is mostly electrolytes. If I'm remembering, um, um, I think their fuel two O. it had, I think it has 50 grams of carbs in oh, it's the, that one. the bigger got packet, multiple yeah. different, so, yeah. <laughs> you know how the cabinet looks like. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. so yes, I know they have one that is just more electro. It's one. So that's probably mm-hmm. the one then that I've been, um, using that has, yeah. One. Nice. Yeah. yeah. The, um, I think the tropical flavor is the one me and I like the best with their, I haven't tried their Coca-Cola one yet. Have you? Is, that one's yeah. not, not the, but I've also <laughs> noticed, especially like while I'm racing, I get very, very picky about like yes. what's going in. So like Huma gels, they are an amazing product, but the texture while I am racing, very problematic to my yes. brain. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, they're, they're, you're spot on with all of that. I mean, I think people need to test and play around with stuff. I mean, to hear one person will say they love Martins and then the next person says it reminds them of a jellied eel thing they had at a restaurant in Paris. I'm like, what? This is like, you know, everybody's got their unique, um, flavor profile and texture preferences and, you know, the flavor fatigue and all that stuff. So yeah, I think takeaway from this is test, 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 and, and see what works for you. Um, over long duration stuff too, I think is important. Um, so kind of with the, that kind of timeline nutrition wise, you've sounds like you did develop the system. Do you, during your training plan to practice with your nutrition in a couple sessions per week or, do you slowly increase that when you lead up to a race or what does that usually look like? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think on long runs, I am consistently trying to practice that. Um, right now I've been training for some shorter distance races. So Mm -hmm. I have been trying during those like hard interval sessions to like practice putting food in the mouth and chewing. Um, and so that's been kind of a back and forth of like, I don't know if that's going to work. You may have to do only liquid, um, and kind of figuring out, yeah, it's that same thing. Cause I didn't think about that for a long time. I only thought about it on the long run Mm. and that is good practice, but it's different in that race scenario where you're pushing so much harder. And so, yeah, taking the time in some of those speed sessions to just kind of practice with some different things I have found really useful. Yeah, definitely. And, um, I'll give a shout out to, to Amanda's YouTube channel. If you guys haven't checked it out, she posts some great content on there. One of the things I was just watching was her tip to actually get that cup from the aid station, get that water down. Do you want to walk the listeners through that? Cause I think it's a very handy tip. <laughs> it is. It's like one of those that I will hear from people that they're like, I don't have time to stop or whatever. Yeah. Um, so if you are not carrying your own hydration and you're using the cups, that's 
awesome. Um, what I try to do is when I grab the cup, I don't walk. That's my preference because if I start walking, I'd, I'd be happy to just keep walking. Um, so I will slow down. And if you pinch the cup, you basically create a little funnel. So pour that into your mouth. Think about holding it in your mouth and then swallowing. And so that stops you from kind of getting that air swallow along with the liquid. And if you grab something that's the electrolyte or whatever, you're getting that bonus of your mouth sensors, understanding that some fuel is coming in for that little bit of like your brain kind of thinking, okay, cool. I'm getting some energy. Yeah. I think that's great. And then the, in your video, when you pinch the top of the paper cup together, I mean, if you're still running while you're holding this thing, I mean, it's keeping the fluids in there. They're not splashing out the top. Like you're running around with an open bowl or something down the, the race. Yeah, it's much uh, easier to manage. Yeah. That's awesome. And so, um, similarly on that note, do you happen to have any tips or tricks for transporting and, or getting that product or hydration from the bottle or the packaging into someone's mouth when they're racing? Yeah. So Depending on what you're using, if you're using things like chews, I say have that package open already um, because it's like a gel you can often like grab with your teeth, whatever those other packages, it just does not always work yeah. if you're running fast and annoyed. Um, so if you can have things kind of open, ready to go, also thinking about maybe where you're placing them on your body. So the things that you're going to want to get to first or easiest or most often um, kind of thing, somewhere that you don't have to dig around a ton for. I've started using a lot of shorts that have pockets on the yeah. sides and I love that now because like yeah. quick grab, like it's right there. I know a lot of people love their speed belt Mm -hmm. um, for me, just by the time I unzipped it and moved, and then I felt like, well, now the weight distribution is off. So for me, that was not always like the best option. So yeah, yeah more things to kind of, like you said, test on those long runs. I tend to wear a hydration vest on my long runs. So mm -hmm. it does not always translate exactly to race day because it's right. so much easier. Um, so I have to remember to kind of practice those things too. Yeah. I think those are great tips. I think to like, goodness, I've heard so many clients with race follow-ups where their the race was so cold that their fingers like couldn't open the packaging. So like you're saying, have it open, ready to roll. Um, I did have a client recently, she had the shorts with the pockets, but she put her like water bottle flask in the side and she actually ended up getting like a sore, a sore spot on her hip, I think from just like the jostling of the, so nutrition in the pocket maybe works really well. I don't know what kind of bottle she had. It must've been pretty stiff. Not one of the, like, um, what do you call them? Possible. Platypus ones or yeah. something. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So something to, again, test and play around with, I think all that super, super helpful tips, um, for the listeners. Definitely. So I'd love to talk a bit too about your run coaching business, how you work with clients, what you do. I know we mentioned a little bit of like your book, some courses, um, the IT band book, things like that. But can you tell us a little bit more about you, how you became a run coach, what kind of things you offer in your coaching and what does that look like for someone who's potentially considering working with you? Yeah. So I started run coaching back in 2012. Um, so it's been part of my full-time business since then. Um, so I've been at it a long time. Every time awesome. I start saying years out loud. Yeah. Um, I really, truly, it started out of having started the blog and, mm -hmm. um, I was a journalism major. So it was fun to start translating that enjoyment and my passion of running into kind of researching and writing things. Um, so as people started asking for coaching, I was like, okay, let me see if I want to do this, get certified, figure some things out. Um, and I just found it so enjoyable to help people achieve their goals. Um, and I, even my book, I lovingly say is for the middle of the pack. So I'm not trying to help people who are trying to win Boston. Um, I am trying to help the runners that I felt like were just like me. They're like, listen, yeah. I have a life and I'm busy, but I know I can do better 
Mm-hmm. I just want to see what better looks like for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been a really fun progression. Um, I actually have a team of 11 running coaches now. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So it's not just me anymore because I just couldn't quite make the time, um, yeah. the volume of runners. So that's been exciting too. I've been adding coaches for a little over five years Wow! Um, and they all share my ethos, they share my training philosophy, um, which really centers around like one, I think it should be fun. Mm -hmm. Two, I need you to stay injury free. And three, those two things will help us achieve whatever goal you're actually after. So that's kind of the order that I look at training in. Um, Interestingly, now I would say probably 50% of our runners are women over 50. Oh, wow. That's great. It is. It's yeah. really exciting to see that shift happening. And so that's become a greater focus for me. Um, I even went through hormonal issues, like starting around age 29. Wow, and yeah. so it's been in like my thought process for a long time. So I'm excited that we're seeing more information come out related yes. to women. That's very helpful. Um, yeah. So in our one-on-one coaching, everything is super custom to each runner. So we're really looking at what's your life, you know, what's your day look like? What's Mm -hmm. your goal? How can we progress things naturally? How can we fit in that strength training? Um, cause it's no longer negotiable. Um, and so it's really fun to just kind of see it's so different truly for every single person, um, which always sounds a little crazy because I've also created free training plans and I've used free training plans, but once you actually get something customized to you, yeah. I'm like, oh, it's insane how much better this is going. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's, I think that's really important. And I think, I mean, goodness, to, to, it makes me think of the nutrition as well, right. Is like, there's general recommendations, but man, once you get to know somebody and you can kind of fine tune, it's. It, it can move the needle so much faster and we can see that change that much faster and they get that. Yeah. Accountability and, and attention and adaptation is, is so important. Um, I mean, with that, do you having your business grow and having other coaches, they're helping you, do you try and keep yourself to only so many one-on-one clients at a time to manage your time? <laughs> Yeah, I keep the number of folks that I'm directly coaching now pretty small. Um, And it is intentional. Like I will always coach some people, but yes, I'm like, I I can no longer coach 50 people. Like it's just, I'm writing articles. And like you said, like YouTube, social media books. Um, So it's fun. And I love that I get to do all of those things. Um, But I do any client who ever wants to work with us, I speak to them first. Mm. Um, So I do still talk with every single runner that comes through and I understand their goals before ever bring to, to put them with a coach. That's great. So you get to get a feel of maybe their goals and which coach they'd be best suited to. Yeah, it's great because then having a different team of coaches, people do have areas where I feel like they have a little bit more knowledge or expertise. Mm -hmm. Um, But also, I always want to make sure the goal that they're setting is one we can support. Um, So it's you've probably seen this too. Every once in a while, it's the I'm running eight miles. I've got a marathon in three months. And like, I've never done one before. I'm like, oh, gosh. Yeah, It's not that it's not possible, but I don't know that I can co-sign the potential injury risk here. Mm -hmm. Um, So I really want to like chat in detail with them before, like I hand it over to a coach that's like, whoa, yeah, (laughs) you're going to do with this. Right. Yes. Yeah. Goodness. We've, yeah, we run into that too, where people will reach out and they need to, oh my goodness, gut train and they have a race in four weeks. It's like, what? (laughs) <laughs> we have, we're starting from zero and going to a hundred. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot. And yeah, I think you, you're spot on with that. You gotta make it clear and get a good chat and expectation wise with that, that client, I would imagine. How does that differ when someone's working one-on-one versus you have a group coaching as well, right? 
Yeah. So with our group coaching, it's more like they're getting access to all of the courses that I've created. So running Mm -hmm. form and I have a 30 day core because as I talked about, it will fix so many of those injuries. Um, And then we have a group on Facebook. And so they have a place one to celebrate, to ask Mm -hmm. questions. All of the running coaches are in there. So Mm -hmm they're able to get feedback from a number of coaches when they ask things, they're just not getting any sort of customized training plan, you know, all those Mm -hmm. little details, no phone check-ins. Right. That's awesome. And do you use an app like what is it? V dot I know is popular with runners and stuff like that. Or yeah. So our one-on-one coaching all goes through final surge. Oh um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is another super popular one. Um, and then the group itself, all the courses are hosted on a platform called think epic. Cool. That's great. And with the courses you mentioned, you mentioned core running form. Was there a- another one that's in there? There's a whole bunch. A whole um, bunch. There's like a number of different strength training. So like body weight, beginner, intermediate, um, wow. 12 week heavy lifting for runners course. We have mm-hmm. a master's runners course. Um, so wow. talking a little bit more about, you know, how do we do things differently? Yeah. Um, we have a trail and ultra running course. Nice. Um, Yeah. So there's a bunch of them on there that have really kind of grown out of the last three years or so. That's really neat. Do you find with your group coaching, like there's like a group of people that are specifically maybe training for New York city or something and that they can get grouped together or is it kind of across the board? There's a variety. It really is a variety. We tend, Mm -hmm. I mean, we always have a little bit of clumping with like Mm -hmm. the big races simply by virtue of so many people getting into them. Um, but people are so spread out. Um, we try to like organize some meetups when we can see a number of folks are going to be at a race. Um, but they are really spread out. They're actually like not even just us They're They're all over. So That's neat. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And so, okay. Books, YouTube courses, group coaching, one-on-one coaching. Am I missing Instagram? Uh, I mean, the website, the website is honestly like my biggest piece of my business. Um, so I spend a lot of time writing. (laughs) That's awesome. I mean, with the running stuff, do you do articles for other companies or magazines or stuff like that as well? Yeah, sometimes I've written for Runner's World. Um, I get yeah. quoted often by folks, um, but it sounds sort of ridiculous. I make more money writing for myself. Um, yeah. So the majority of the time, it's just I write for me. That's awesome. That's great. Good for you. And you're that's what your degrees in too. So you obviously have some some um, skills and experience in that arena to to help you. I would imagine easily um, with your kind of year coming up. Do you have any races on the calendar for you right now? I am training for a 10 K in April, um, which has been, yeah. an interesting, the last couple of years, I decided I wanted to, for the first time ever in my entire, like running history, focus on some shorter stuff. Mm. Um, and it's been fun. It's a different kind of challenge than yeah. the endurance challenge. So I think we'll see after this one, if I want to keep doing that, or if it kind of pushes me back towards maybe I want to start to do another half, um, which always leads to (laughs) bigger things. So yes. Did you, do you, did you kind of get a burnout with the longer duration stuff that drew you to the short or? Yeah. So actually, um, I did Chicago in 2021, but I Uh had about an eight year gap between Mm. marathons when I did that one. So I had done like eight and then I stopped and then I did that one. Um, and I loved the training. I yeah. had the best training cycle and then whatever, it was 80 degrees at the start line and it was not a great race. And I was yes. like, I'm just, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, let's look at something else. <laughs> yes. Shoot. Um, I hear that. So with the short stuff and, um, kind of from a nutrition perspective, what, how does that look different? For, then compared to your like half marathon or marathon distance stuff. Yeah. I feel like with the shorter stuff, um, that's where I've been playing a little with like the deering, what feels best. Mm, mm-hmm. Um, so I will carry like, um, you know, when you go to like an event and they give you a baby water bottle, it's like tiny. Yes. So I will usually find one of those from something and put 
either like a little bit of something with caffeine or mm. that tailwind or something. And I will carry that and drink it during the first half and then ditch it. So that mm. by the second half, like hands are free, just like yes. keep pumping along. Um, I'm definitely very focused on right at the start line, taking mm -hmm. something in um, and knowing like, okay, it takes a little bit to get into your system and it should be hitting right as I'm starting to get to that. Like, yeah. okay, this race is a little longer than I think it is in my head. Yeah. Um, and then really and truly the post fueling, um, mm -hmm. I think has been the other thing I've focused a lot more on in the last couple of years, just paying Thanks. a lot more attention to, to that and knowing that I'm doing a lot more strength training. So yeah, like, those pieces have to be solid to keep training consistently. Yes. Yes. I'm, what does your post fueling look like? How has that changed? So it kind of depends um, if we're out and about, especially because we'll drive somewhere for a trail or a long run or something. Um, core power I tend to have with me. So mm -hmm. lactose free and I yeah. like to just drink it. I don't have to feel hungry. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Is, right. We hear that a lot. I'm just not hungry. So cool. You're not hungry. Just drink it anyways. Like, yes. <laughs> Shout it from the rooftops. Yes. That one's huge. Yes. Um, and then I love like protein oatmeal. Um, mm, yeah. So, yeah. If I haven't had that, then I'll put some protein powder in my oatmeal or something like that. Um, and I love doing that almost any like easy, hard, whatever weekday run I'll try and yeah. do something like that after. Oh, that's great. Okay. So I have to ask you a question then about that. So I tried putting protein powder in my oats and then nuking it and that didn't turn out good. So do, how do you do it? I do most of the time put it in before, but I am definitely very picky about the yeah. protein powder and I've yeah. taste tested so many over the years. Yes. Um, and so it does make a difference. If I put it in afterwards, I feel like I don't get that liquid mm. combo right. Overnight oats, it works really well. Yes. In that. Yes. It does work better if I will make it ahead of time. Yeah. I've tried that. And then that seems to work the overnight for sure. I, the pr like flavor profile seems better. And then, um, stovetop for whatever reason seems, oh, I can see that but it takes longer, which, you know, yes. if you have the time, but yeah, that is one I had, goodness, I forget who I was talking to one of my clients and he was talking about nuking his, and it just turned out like so bad. So I think it could be like protein powder brand specific, right? Um, yeah. But do you use gnarly as a recovery or what's your go-to for post? Um, I swear I rotate through so many because there's so many floating yeah. through as I test things. I bet, um, yeah. I do a lot of plant-based if I'm doing scoops mm -hmm. protein powder. Um, so I do like Vegas sport, oh, um, yeah. mm -hmm. M protein. Mm -hmm. I like them. They're a women owned company, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So those are a couple that kind of my go-to's. That's great. That's, I love that. Yeah. I think totally spot on with what you're saying too. the post training. So many clients just don't, will go hours without eating. And it's, we're kind of, we're missing a couple things, right? I mean, we're, we're missing some, some protein timing window. We're missing, you know, the elevation and the glycogen synthase enzyme. So to stock those carbs away. Um, yeah. So I think if we can get it in and if it's liquid, just try and try and get something in instead of nothing, if you can, to help with that. Um, and then I'd love to dive in just a little bit with the time we have here. Um, the strength component you keep mentioning, um, I know it's become a very popular topic goodness across the board, but definitely incorporating more strength for runners, cyclists, things like that. What are you finding to be most successful in terms of giving maybe performance benefits and, or limiting injury, um, with regards to how often someone should be strength training maybe throughout the week or throughout their season. And what is that, what are your suggestions on that? Yeah, I think kind of looking at it as a little bit of a cycle. So, okay, I've got a base building phase before mm -hmm. I actually dive into my training plan. Mm -hmm. Cool. During that phase, can you be getting in three times a week? Can you lift a little bit heavier? Cause that tends to be the runner issue is, but I'm sore. And so now my run doesn't feel good. So then right. they just don't want to do the strength at all. Um, so 
if we can use that phase where you can take your next day a little easier or cut it short and it's not a big deal because it's not like oh i'm training and this is what has to happen mm -hmm. that then leads over into the training cycle where you already feel stronger um, and particularly in marathon training it's hard not to lose some muscle when yeah. you're a lot of volume so cool you've built up some muscle it's a lot easier mm. to kind of hold on to it um, so then as training sort of progresses I'm asking like minimum, can we squeeze in two days of 20 minutes? And like, yeah. if that's all you have, I will take it versus nothing happening, you know? Yeah. Um, and we certainly see that like, if body weight is where you're at right now, then do that. But once we can start progressing to actually picking up some dumbbells, mm. then we do really see the performance gains start yeah. to kick in. Um, and I think it is just the building the power out of our glutes, out of our hips, like yeah. those muscles that are really pushing us and also just making us more efficient with every stride we take. So yeah. by building that muscle, we gain efficiency, which means our body doesn't have to work as hard. So our easy days feel easier. We can go a little harder on hard days. And I feel like as runners start to sort of feel that a little bit, they're just more apt to stick to the strength training as well. Um, but it's, it's much like running. We don't notice it overnight. Yeah. Um, so it does take time and consistency. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's, I, I love that advice. And I think that is so important. So with those kind of talking about strengthening the body, and you know, you mentioned core at 1.2 throughout our discussion here, but are they, do you suggest squats, deadlifts, um, that kind of stuff. Or... Yeah. So all the, like, honestly, strength training does not have to be super complicated. Mm -hmm. Um, so all about lunge variations, start out with no weight, add some weight. Those are all amazing step ups onto a box are incredible yeah. for runners. Um, mm -hmm. Bulgarian split squats are incredible for runners. Um, yeah. Deadlifts, chest press, and the other thing you are getting with a lot of the basic movements is it's forcing you to engage your core. So you're getting that stabilization. So I do like some basic core movements too, like doing a plank where you're shoulder tapping or side plank where you're raising a leg. So kind of dynamic plank yeah. movements. And that's helping you to work on stabilizing, which we don't really think about, but it's happening during your entire run. You need to have all those muscles working together. Yeah, definitely. Do you suggest or include um, individuals do like upper body strength movements? I heard you say chest press. So yeah, I think upper body gets overlooked for runners, but um, if you're thinking about it, even and you're out there for four hours running a marathon, like I've heard people say like, gosh, my shoulders and my arms were like tired. And I'm like, yeah. oh, yes, you, you are using your whole body, whether you think about it or not. Plus, if you can just, again, build some muscle, mm -hmm. but all of that, there's just so many health benefits too, which is yeah. going to make you be able to keep running. So I think it's super valuable. That's awesome. I love all of that. So takeaways, I think I gathered from this is definitely incorporate some strength, um, get that nutrition in immediately post workout, even if you're not hungry. Um, there are some other good ones in there, the fueling tips. Um, I think all of these are fantastic tips for our listeners without a doubt. Um, before we finish things up here, I want to go over our two truths and a lie. Uh, so we can figure out what our, our, our lie was, um, we had that you were a theater kid and played Dorothy and wizard of Oz that you did a marathon during your honeymoon or that you did and, or you did a 50 K during COVID by yourself. Nia and I said, the theater kid was a lie. <laughs> what, what was your lie? So the lie was that I did a marathon during our honeymoon. <laughs> oh, shoot. So what, tell us about the 50 K you did during COVID. Yeah. So interestingly, I had always kind of had in mind, like, I'd like to do an ultra someday, but yeah. then I was committed to this race or that race, or just felt like I didn't really have time for that kind of training. So yeah. Then COVID, um, interestingly, my book came out three days before the lockdown. Oh, <laughs> and so I think mentally I needed running like yeah. more than ever. Cause I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. It, yeah. it, did, it did great. So it was fine. Awesome. Good. Um, 
but I just kind of took advantage of that time and thought I'm never again going to have the time I feel like to train for this. And so by October of 2020, I just decided like, I'm just going to go do this by myself. And my husband was like, I mean, do you want me to like meet you somewhere on the way? And initially I was like, no, it's fine. I'm just going to run point to point. You come pick me up. Um, but luckily he did stop. um, Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. You know how race day sometimes goes. That's how this day went. I had a point where I was like, my knee is killing me out of nowhere. So like, he brought me shoes. I changed my shoes. I drank some ginger ale because my stomach hurt. Oh, <laughs> and then, like, yeah. Went on my way. And I think he did like the last two miles with me. Nice. Um, yeah. And so it was amazing. It was perfect. Um, I, I don't know. Part of me would really like to do an actual race. Um, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see if that is a thing that actually happens or not. That's awesome. I love that. And um, to finish up here, where can people find you? What's your YouTube name, Instagram handle, website, book, all the stuff? Yeah. So I am run to the finish pretty much everywhere. That is the benefit to having been around for so long. So Perfect. run to the finish.com is the website. And that is my handle on pretty much every social channel. Excellent. Awesome. Well, we will link all of those in the show notes for the listeners. So people can pop over and find Amanda on YouTube, Instagram, website, books, all the things. Um, So check the show notes listeners. And thank you again, Amanda, so much for joining us. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me.